hi everyone welcome back to the channel so today we are starting a series which we call the excel automation series so this series will be dealing with all the excel related automation in uipath studio and this would be the first video in the series so let's see the agenda for the first video so today we are going to discuss what are the different ways of reading excel in uipath then we'll discuss the properties and we will see a demonstration that how changing the properties affects the automation Post that we will discuss what is a difference between the Excel versus the workbook activities and then post that we will see the demonstration of the difference between an Excel and a workbook. So this is the agenda for today. Let's see how we can read an Excel in the UiPath Studio. So I am in the UiPath Studio now. I have I am in the main .xml file. I will quickly go to the activities and I will look for Excel application scope. Okay, so I'll just quickly drag Excel application scope here. So if you'll go to the properties, you will notice there are certain properties. So the first and the foremost thing is the workbook path. So workbook path is the path of the Excel which you want to read in the Excel application scope. So for the demo purpose, what I have done is if I quickly go here. So I will just open this one. So I have placed one sample Excel file. So this is the sample Excel file which we are going to process in the demonstration okay so i have kept it in the project location so what are the different ways to pass the uh, workbook path so first thing we can directly go here we will just go to the excel we'll select the sample excel and here it is okay so this is the first way the second way is you can just directly take a string variable so let's say in case you are doing automation and you want this file to be coming from somewhere else right so what you can do is you can have a variable let's say str path and pass the string uh, the excel location and you will just pass this path here right so this is the way how you can get this so this accepts a string variable so the string variable will have the complete path okay now again going back to the properties so this we understand now so auto save is the property so let's say if you are in the do of the excel application scope you have certain number of activities do you want to auto save the excel if you are not using the auto save so what you have to do is you have to drag and drop the save workbook activity so if you disable the auto save and you are not using the save workbook, then your all the changes will be lost right so these are the options available okay so the next option is create new file this means that if the excel which you have specified is not available do you want uipart to create a new excel so let's quickly check that one if i go here so this option is checked so as of now we have available this file right so what i'll do is i'll just change the name to excel sample new and if i go to the folder the excel file is not available and my new option is checked so what should happen is create new file it will just create the new file okay if i go to the output yeah it's executed completely if i go back so if you will see the new excel is created Okay, I'll just quickly delete this one so that is the property for creating the new file this one so as of now I'll just leave it and check because I already have the file with me so I'll just rename it back to the excel sample file.xls okay so this is the two property auto save you understood create new file then there is something called macro setting so you have option of enable disable or read from the excel setting so macro let's say you have excel where you already have the data right I already have some of the macros so how do you want to treat the macros so if you come to docs.uipart.com you will see under the option auto save we have discussed create new file we have discussed and demonstrated so this is the macro setting so these are the option available do you want to enable all if you select this all the macros are enabled and can be run if you disable all all the macros will be disabled if you select this option read the current excel macro settings okay so now one more important thing about excel application scope okay so the if you'll see there is an option called select this checkbox read only and what this will do it will allow you to just read the data in the read only mode right so if you'll see the properties it says open the specified workbook in the read only mode selecting checkbox enable you to perform data extraction operation which is locked for editing and has edit password by default the checkbox is not selected okay so these were the option for the excel workbook so if i just go above you will see this was the workbook path and let's say if your excel is password protected and you want to have the password so you can have the password here so this is how so this password you can uh, take it either from the orchestrator or it takes a string variable 
so you can store it anywhere and then you can definitely edit the password right so all these details you can easily come back to docs.uipart.com and you will get all those details i'll provide the link in the description next we have the output so if you want to store the output of the entire workbook so if you'll go here in the output section you have workbook so you can hit ctrl k and create a variable right so let's say if you want to do something programmatically so let's say you want to get all the name of the sheets right so for that you would require a workbook object so how do we do that we just hit ctrl k it will create an object for workbook and then we can use this object wb for the further operations right so the last option which it has is the existing workbook so what this is mean that you already have a variable of the workbook type and if you want to use the same variable in the excel application scope you can go ahead and use it right so see one thing here so if i go here and write wb right it will give an error why it is giving an error it is saying that you can either have a workbook path or you will have the existing workbook right so at a time excel application scope will read only one excel right either it has to come from the path this path or either it has to pass from an existing workbook so for the demo we'll just remove this one okay so this is how you read the excel application scope right and one more thing so let's say if you have xlsv file or any other different format you have which you are not able to browse it here you can easily come here and change the extension here type the complete path and excel application scope will be able to accommodate it okay so these were all the properties i wanted to discuss about excel application scope now we have discussed all the properties of the excel application scope let's quickly see how we can read a sheet in the excel so for that we quickly go to the excel and we type read range right so if you'll see there are two read range available one is for excel and another is for workbook so as of now we are in excel application scope so we will go with the this one app integration excel and the read range we'll talk about this in the later part of the video so as of now just drag and drop this read range so if I go to the properties, you will see read range has very minimal properties. The first thing is the sheet name. So which sheet you want to read. If I quickly go back to the Excel, you will see I have a sheet name called sheet one. Okay. And if you will see here range. So if nothing is specified, this take a string variable. It will just read the entire range. If you want to read a specific range, you have to provide the range like this. Okay. So what it will happen, it will start reading the data from A2. Or if you want to do the complete range, you can do it like this A2 to let's say B5 something on like this okay so this is how you use the read range variable so as of now i'll leave it to blank because i want to read the complete sheet okay so the next option is add header so as of now if you'll see there are headers so if you i want to consider the headers or not if i don't want to consider the headers i'll just uncheck this checkbox and it will not read the headers so while unchecking the headers what will happen is uipath will itself put the header name as column zero column one. so next there is something called preserve formatting so let's say you already have some data or the date or the currency filter which is already applied on the excel sheet right so you do you want to preserve this one formatting while reading the data but mind you when we check this checkbox preserve formatting the reading of the excel will be slower so if you go to the docs.uipod.com the official site you will see what they have mentioned is if you will go to the read range selecting the preserve formatting is slower so that is because it is trying to retain each and every uh, this cell properties right so this is the preserve formatting so if you want if you have a need of preserving the format go go ahead and check this checkbox so as of now i don't want the uh, formatting so i'll just leave it unchecked use the filter so how do you want to read the data so let's say if i have already filtered my data for let's say velo so when I read the data, do I want to read the entire data or I just want to read the filter data? If I just want to read the filter data, I'll go ahead and use this option. But as of now for the demo, we are going to read the entire data. So we we'll lift it blank, right? So these are all the options for the read range. Now talking about the output, the output is a data table. So whatever sheet data you read, it is in a data table. So data table is in a format of rows and columns. So I'll quickly go ahead and I'll just write dt for the sample excel okay so this is done so this is how we can read the data in the excel okay so let's quickly go back and see how many rows of data we have here so i'll just uncheck all the filters okay and see total we have 701 rows including the headers right so i will just add the headers also now let's see whether the ui path was able to read the data or not so i'll what i will do is we'll quickly go and type a message box here 
and we will just try to type the count in a variable so we have a variable called data data table so we'll write dt sample dot whose count rows dot count so rows dot count will give an integer variable so message box takes an string variable so what we do is we parse it to two string okay let's quickly run this automation and see how it goes okay so that count was 700 okay so this completes the read range demonstration now if I go to the Excel application you will see I have forgot one property which was called visible so what visible means is do you want the automation to be visible in front of you or do you want everything to happen in the background so if I have unchecked this option you will not see anything happening in the front end so what I'll do I'll quickly close this one I'll just don't save okay now if I'll run the automation you will not see the Excel popping up in the screen and everything will happen in the background okay now let's see go here and check this visible checkbox now you see the excel is open in the screen so this is what the visible checkbox means if you check it you will be able to see if it is unchecked you will not be able to see anything on the screen so this is the read range okay so let's quickly see this option in working use filter so as of now what we have seen is when we printed the row count it was 700 because it has 701 rows including the header so we quickly go to this guy and select the filter to value and the row count is now reduced to 110 okay so now we just save the excel okay i'll just continue it i'll close this one so if i now go here and hit this checkbox right and what is happening is it is reading the excel and the filter option is on and we are printing the data table count okay let's try to run this automation so the count we have received in 109 because we have checked the option to apply filter as yes okay so if i go back to the automation you will see we have used this option so the current filter was having 109 rows that's why you we were getting 109 rows right so what if i uncheck this option now expectation is it will ignore the filter and it will read the entire set of the data that is the 700 rows okay so we got the 700 rows as the output okay so this was the demonstration of reading the excel with the help of the excel application scope now let's see what other options we have available to read the excel apart from the excel application scope so if you go to activities we go under file uh, system file workbook and then we have activities which are called the workbook related activities we can read the excel with the help of the workbook activity so we quickly drag read range we do not have something called workbook application scope we directly have the read range so what are the properties so this we are aware of so i'll quickly just select the range if i go to the properties so you will notice we have the range so this is this is the same concept we either we want to read the entire sheet or we just want to read the particular range so you can specify it here as of now i'm just writing the complete range then we provide the sheet name workbook path okay add headers is the same if you want to read the headers or not as of now we want to read the headers if there is any password just specify the password and this is for the preserve formatting right so the output for both the activities is the data table so i'll quickly go ahead and create a data table for let's say data table for workbook activities i will drag a message box okay and it dot rows dot count dot to string okay i'll close the excel and let's try to run this so you will see we were able to get the number of the rows count right so now the question arises what is the difference between using an excel application scope and the workbook activities right so perhaps so the primary difference is excel application scope requires the excel to be installed on the machine so in my machine i have the excel installed that's why i was able to use the excel application scope for the workbook activities excel is not required to available on the machine you can run workbook activities even if the excel is not available right so this is the first difference right so the next difference is if i go to the excel application scope and if i open the file 
okay since the excel is already installed i'll be able to open it if i go to your path studio now and if i run the excel application scope i was able to get the count right so if i work the same workflow with the help of the workbook activities we'll get an exception saying that it cannot process the file so this is the second thing that you cannot read then uh, excel which is already open with the help of the workbook activities okay the other thing is with the help of the excel activities you have many features like if i go to the activities and if i just see the excel application scope so if i go to the app integration under excel you will see i can read the table i can read the pivots i can select the graph ranges i can uh, change the cell color all these options are provided by the excel so i have something on processing insert data refresh tables filter the tables and then we have something related to the macros and then also the excel application scope come up with the option of visible where you can see the settings on the screen comparing it to the workbook activities so if i go to the workbook activities so the workbook activities have only a limited set of options available so as a suggestion if you have excel already installed on the machine go ahead and use the excel application scope because it provides a more range more variety of activities as compared to the workbook activities so this completes the first video of the excel series hope you like the video please subscribe to the channel and happy automation